keep seeing the, the social media attacks, and what do you think can be done to? <laughs> that that Pandora, that genie's out of the bottle. Uh, ain't nothing you can do about it. You just better have some mental toughness. Don't play. Don't coach. Uh, you know, go do something that where you can just kind of, you know, be out of the fray. Um, because there's nothing you can do about it. I mean, what are you going to do? I mean, I mean, people can go online and say what they want to say anytime they want to. You know, heard this from a guy in the third stall in the bathroom, and man, did you hear this? I saw this coach drunk as a skunk over here, and it doesn't have to be anything true at all. It can be complete fabrication, complete lies. I mean, when I was coaching at Alabama, you know, I knew all the beat writers, and you know, it was the good old days. You knew all the beat writers, and there was they would actually, you know. You know, there was a respect there, and, and, and you know, they would, they're getting ready to write a story. You know, they'd call you and say, hey, you know, listen, and you have a ch – now, I mean, it's like – and it's not – it doesn't have to be any – you guys, local guys. I'm talking about it's, it's people who aren't even media. You know, it's, it's like everybody's media now. Everybody's got a cell phone. Everybody's got a record. Everybody's got all these things. So what can you do about that? You can't do anything about it other than – Understand when you know you sign up for this deal, uh, you, you're gonna you're gonna be open to criticism, and that's just the way it is. And you know we're all we're all flawed people. We're all uh, we all fail. Sometimes some of us just fail in front of a big audience. And uh, when when you're in that realm, you just have to you have to take the good and the bad. It comes with the territory. Unfortunately, that's the bad thing about uh the world we live in now and uh you know but that's why you see uh, you know a lot of a lot of young people making a lot of mistakes too uh because it's their whole life is played out you know and it's you know i think puts even more pressure on them uh and, and expectations and things like that so uh, whether you're a coach or a player you know you, you you've got to You've got to really uh, have the proper perspective and understand what really matters and, you know, who you let in here. Because uh, if you let that in there, then you're, you're done. How much do you address it, the mental toughness part of it, your players? Need All the time. All the time. Uh, it's a huge part of who we are. I mean, we've won 15 out of 16. Hadn't happened since the 40s. You better have some mental toughness to be able to do that, and uh, it's a, it's a, it's it's something that we it's a it's all year long. I mean, you have to develop mental toughness. You have to teach and educate and counsel and um, uh, deal with all of those things. I mean, we're dealing with as coaches, we're dealing with things now that I never in a million years would have even thought I'd ever have to deal with. You know, 15 years ago, you know, much less 20 years ago. It's just a completely different world. So, yeah, you better you better have a plan to address all of those things. Um, that's why you have big support staffs uh, because it's just a lot of different pressures and challenges in 2015 than there were in 1985, 1990, 1995, even 2000. It's a totally different world um, to that you gotta that you gotta deal with in, in helping these guys, you know think the right way and be able to, you know, handle success, handle failure, um, negativity, and so forth. Coach, do you feel like uh, after the Michigan-Michigan State game, I mean, do you go over all those situations with your kickers, and do you think maybe every time they walk on the field, they think, what should I do if this happens or – like oh yeah, we cover all type of all situations. Uh, in you know, we do a lot of that in the preseason. Uh, we have kind of a little reminders deal that we do each and every week. And you talk about things, but um, you know uh, that was just a unfortunate situation. You know, this guy made a bad play. It's, just, it's just that simple. Uh, that's that's football. Deborah, were you aware of the story? Uh, I think it took place on Sunday, where uh, there was a very sick little girl that they wanted to get her to one Clemson game. They sent the university sent the band, yep. and just, just just your reaction. Yeah, what would be that sort of? Yeah, thing? I think I signed I signed the ball for. Uh, well, that's just great. I mean, I think that's I think most schools try to 
uh, and most schools recognize the opportunity that they have to uh, make people smile from time to time uh, in different ways other than just a product on the field. And um, Clemson certainly gets that. And I think, I think they do a wonderful job of, of trying to, uh, uh, you know, help people in our community, you know, as, as often as possible. It's a great, great moment. Dalvin Cook is probably the best running back in the country. I'm just curious if you've seen much of Burnett and how you would kind of compare the two of those. They're, I mean, it's like comparing James Winston and Marcus Mariota. Uh, I mean, they're both really good, but you can only pick one. Uh, I'm picking Dalvin Cook. That, that guy is, and I mean, I mean, it's, they're both phenomenal players. I mean, you, they're great players. Uh, and, and I have seen him a good bit, but I just, and maybe it's just more style of play. Uh, you know, more what I'm used to. Uh, you know, he, he, they, those are two. I mean, I hadn't seen, I hadn't seen everybody, but those are definitely the two best guys that I've seen out there. Alabama's got a great back. Uh, uh, certainly the kid at Georgia before he got hurt, but uh, Dalvin Cook, his, his explosiveness uh, in the passing game, it, it, you know, combined with his explosiveness in the running game is, is unique. <laughs>